That's it. Submit and proceed. I'm going to show you everything you need to know about Cursor, the new AI code editor, as fast as possible. By the end of this video, you're going to have a complete understanding of how to leverage Cursor as a code editing software. In addition, which is probably bigger here, is I'm actually going to show you how to take code like this and put it into a development environment that allows us to see the actual outputs of what the code would look like. This is super cool. As I was able to create this little dinosaur game, if you're familiar with Google Chrome, very fast, watch this, using cursor, like very fast. It took me to do one or two sentences of layman terms to build out a game like this. So let me show you how from start to finish everything you need to know about cursor AI. To start off here, go ahead and just download it. It's completely free to start. Pricing wise, there is a free tier, $20 a month, $40 a month. But the best part is that there's a free tier. So you can go to see if you even like this. Once you download it, you're going to go ahead and launch in. It's going to require you to create an account with Cursor for free. And on top of that, ask some prerequisite questions. But once you're launched in, this is going to be your first project. Let me outline a couple of things here as if you've never seen a single line of code. Let me make this as simple as possible. First major thing you need to identify. What project are we in? Right now, we are in the project of Cursor Tutor. You can see that in the search bar here. And you can see that over here in the side tab. As a side note as well, I'm probably going to do a ton more videos on Cursor because this was actually a lot of fun. Second major thing you need to identify is what the heck is going on over here. With this beginning project here, we are given a couple of things. So if you come over to projects, JavaScript, this is your index.js. Here is where we're going to build out our environment that's going to showcase on a web browser that you'll see later in this video. But here's all you really need to know. In the way this code is currently structured, it's very much so where the rendering of the app, the CSS, the J6, everything's kind of just jumbled up into one file. When you're actually coding out real software, you definitely don't want to do it like this. But for the purposes of this video, we're going to go ahead and leverage this file to showcase from start to finish how to even render this. As a side note, package-lock.json, this is where we install dependencies. As an example here, this is very much React based, but just to give you like more context of what a dependency is, imagine that we wanted to integrate a payment system like Stripe, that would be a dependency. Our package.json is where we give relevant script commands in order to run this and also a bunch of other stuff when it comes to just the underlying application itself. Don't worry that it'll make a lot of sense. You'll learn more as you go here. And actually, let me show you the first major feature you need to know about Cursor AI, which is your ability to conversate with your code. So for example here, let's say I'm looking at this code and I'm like, what the heck is going on? I can simply highlight all this and hit Command L or Control L. What this allows us to do is actually conversate with the underlying file. So for example, I could say, what does copy mean? And for me asking that question, what you'll see is that we can scroll down here and then give us idea of what this even means. It helps you find bug earlier in the development process. It prepares your app for future React features, etc. So this is very specific to the dot strict mode and what does strict mode even mean? I mean, you could go as far as actually asking a question on the underlying file itself as well. And for anyone that's been coding for a while here, let me show you a really, really cool feature here. So I can sue new chat. They're making some type of chat interface here. And we can actually chat with multiple files within a project. So if I hit this little add button here, I could also add, you know, the package.json. Maybe we have a CSS file, another JS file. So for example, if I add the readme, just to gut check this to show you what it can do here, we currently have the index.js, but we also have the readme. This is all that's in the readme. So just to show you that this works in the context of that it's actually able to read multiple files here, I can simply say, I'll put what is said in the readme and what is the header text. So we're looking for an output of, you know, the MPI start and then also hello world, which we can see both in the index.js and the readme. If you're like, Corbin, I've been developing for 10 years. This is too simple. Chill out. I'll do more advanced tutorials later on on this channel. For now, this is just to give you an idea if you've never coded how to approach this. That's the chat situation. There's definitely more we can leverage there, especially in the context of larger projects. For now though, let's move to one of its bigger features here which is code generation. But before we do that, and to be honest with you, this is probably going to be the most watched part of this video. Let me show you how to actually run this so we can see hello world in our browser. First things first, do the command line of npmi, npmi. Next, we're gonna go into the specific directory of where all this code is even located. What you'll notice is that that is why I referenced earlier in this video, cursor tutor. This is the name of where our code is found in. But more specifically, what we care about here is the package.json. This is what's going to allow us to build said React app, as you'll see from these scripts here, start, build, test, eject. Therefore, we need to find this directory within our computer. First major thing you need to do, 
PDW. This is going to give you the first half of the path for what is relevant to us. All right, went ahead and enlarged just a little. I already know some of y'all were about to put something in the comments like, Corbin, this is this is too small. No, don't worry. Your next instinct might be, okay, well, if that means that's my path, I'm going to go ahead and add dot cursor tutor to get me to the file of where all this code exists. Not so much. To actually access the path that will have our package.json, here is going to be the structuring. I'll make sure to leave this in my description of this video, or maybe it will be a comment. Simply put in your path that we found earlier. I also put in dot cursor tutor projects javascript to clarify this what's occurring here is that we're going to cursor tutor projects javascript and then package.json once we have that when we put in these terminal commands we're speaking directly to that part of our computer obviously you create a new project you'd have to rename this part etc next we need to make sure we install the react dependencies here so we're going to do npm install react scripts don't worry when it does that little load bar it's not going crazy i'm not downloading a virus maybe i am i'm just joking but I'm going to go ahead and not do this because I already did it. And let me show you how to actually launch it now. Now that we have installed everything, we're in the correct directory. If you're like, kind of this part of this video, you're hitting errors. Are you in the correct directory? Does it say whatever you have plus JavaScript? Does it say that? No, you're not in the correct area. Let's go and launch it. So what we're doing here is we're running this script right here. React scripts start. When I do this, your browser is going to open up a new tab called localhost. Hit enter. This is what a successful message is going to look like. Boom, boom. Hello world. Let me give you some one-on-ones of what's even occurring here. So first thing you need to understand, this is localhost 3000. What this means is that go ahead and search localhost 3000 on your computer right now. It's going to show nothing. It's going to be kaput. That's because it's only existing within our environment, our local environment. Therefore, no one in the internet can access this. Only you and your computer can access this. And this is dope. And the reason this is dope is because that means any type of edits we do in the code will automatically reflect here instantly. Instantly Corbin dash dash chicken. Command save, dash, dash, chicken. Boom. Got it? So now that you understand how this type of environment works, I'm going to do a very simple, give me some code. And then I'm going to show you how I made that dinosaur game or just like a block game in the beginning of this video. Major thing, you've probably seen it in all your videos. This is probably why you click this video is what you're about to see right now. So if I go ahead and highlight all this, I hit command K, I can ask it very specific directions here. Let me go ahead and make this so you can see it better, better. So as a very simple starter here, I'm simply going to put this. When they say layman dictation, they mean layman dictation. Center, hello world. Could we also add a button under it in column format saying that was easy? That was easy. Make it a round rectangle. When I click it, shows a text saying subscribe, maybe. Hit submit here and, you know, this is where the money's at here. This is why people are starting to use cursor a ton. Go ahead and accept here. If you're familiar with gets, git commits, this looks very familiar. It shows the old code that's getting burned, deleted, the green code, which is coming in. Hit accept here. You're like, Corbin, why didn't you reflect? Because I have to hit command save. And boom. If I click this button, subscribe. Maybe. Super cool, right? Let's go to show you how I made that dinosaur game. I'm going to hit command Z here. Command Z again. Save. Let's go ahead and highlight all the code again. So when I was first testing out Cursor AI, I wanted to go as layman as possible with the way I was speaking to it. I didn't want to use developing terms. I just wanted to be like, hey, create me a game. And this is basically what I asked. I said, okay, do you know when you can't connect to the internet on Google Chrome, it does a dinosaur game where you jump over, jump off the cactus, jump over. Let me add that. <laughs> like a side scroller game with a high score. Make all the designs in 8-bit. That's it. Submit and proceed. As someone that's developing a artificial intelligence software, what I can tell you, this isn't changing the game in the sense of full-blown application development, but it's definitely changing the game in the sense of you could really educate yourself fast when it comes to coding. Except command save. And here we go. Right now in the comments, what score do you think I'm about to get right now? Let me make this bigger. What score? What score? Let's go. It's a little slow. It's a little slow, but that just means I'm going to get high. I'm going to get a high score here. <laughs> I messed up. Regardless, though, that was all done in like 10 seconds. Will I have to do more videos on this topic? I think I'm inclined to. Make sure you leave a like. It's completely free. Let me know what you want to see me build of Cursor AI. I'm currently building out an entire artificial intelligence software through just coding. Not using this. But if you want to learn how to code using ChatGPT, check out that video right there. I'm actually going to leave a playlist at the end here that shows you how to develop an entire website, like actually develop an entire website that will cost you $0 a month. So if you're interested in that, check it out at the end here. I do a ton of other stuff on this channel because I'm going to be honest, if you already know this video is going to get a lot of views. <laughs> so if you want to check me out on other stuff, check it out. Type in Corbin Brown AI. See what's up. I'll see you in the next video. These videos are based off everything you've done up to YouTube this point. I'll leave that playlist right there for the website. That'll be a random video. It doesn't look that bad. I'll see you in the next video.